What determines how fast a room warms up when you turn up the heat? To investigate this, I'll do some experiments with my shed because it's a simple small room. I know exactly how much insulation is in the walls and the temperature on the outside of the walls, so long as it's cloudy. And I'm going to use this Drio space heater who also happens to be sponsoring this video because sometimes with some of these other space heaters when it's very cold, the internal fan actually doesn't start up, which is very dangerous. I've got three sensors in the room, top, middle and bottom, plus one of the outside and the blue line here is power level. And when I turn on that heater, the temperature rose very quickly in the first five minutes or so and then rises much more slowly. And when I turn the heater off here, it falls just as quickly as it rose and turn it back on and it rises very quickly pretty much to where it was before. So it looks like there's two things at play, something that heats up very fast, probably the air, and something that heats up very slow. Based on the internal volume of the shed and the thousand watts from the heater, we should see about 7.74 degrees Celsius per minute temperature rise. So I took the initial part of the graph and blew that up a little bit, and at best initially we're seeing 3.5 degrees Celsius rise for the top temperature, less for the bottom. That's less than half of what I was expecting, so something's not quite right. But then I realized my sensors themselves might have some lag to them, so I heated them up with a blow dryer to see how fast they'd settle back to equilibrium. I plotted the three temperatures for the sensors and I fit some exponential curves on top of those, and those ones have a settling of 13% to the new temperatures every 10 seconds, and from that I was able to work out for every 30 seconds I have to add 1.928 times the difference to compensate for the sensor lag. So using that factor I added the difference to my readings and this is before compensation and this graph is with compensation. It jumps around a little bit more because I'm adding a difference so the noise is increased. And looking at the first few minutes of this I get a temperature rise of about 4 degrees for the top sensor and 3 degrees for the middle sensor. And my calculations indicate the air should heat up at 7.7 .7 degrees per minute so that's actually pretty close. So if the air in the shed is that easy to heat up, the rest of the heat has to go into the walls and whatever might be in the shed. Using the dimensions of the shed and the mass per square meter for the plywood that I was using, I worked out that I have 120 kilograms of plywood in the floor, walls and ceiling times 1760 joules per degree a kilogram. That comes to, at 1000 watts, a 0 0.00473 degree rise per second or 17 degrees per hour. So once I've heated up the air, the rest of the heat going into the walls should result in a 17 degree per hour temperature rise. And on my temperature graph, after the initial fast heating, the slope for the next 15 minutes is about 4 degrees or 16 degrees per hour, so pretty close. Of course, that's ignoring that there's also some stuff in the shed and also that the shed heats up unevenly. The floor heats up much slower than the top of the shed and the plywood heats from the inside out. But I figure I should do another experiment on this. For this experiment, I've got a sensor the way I had it before, one that's inside of a sleeve of tinfoil to shield it from infrared from the wall so it'll pick up the air temperature better, another one taped to the wall, and another one between two pieces of wall plywood to sort of measure what it would be like behind the walls. So here's the data from my sensors. The one in tinfoil and the one in air are almost the same, so that really didn't make a difference. The purple line is the sensor inside the sandwich of plywood, that's the wall plywood but hanging in the air. And the blue line is the sensor that's taped to the back wall. I cut off the heat right here just to sort of see how it would settle before turning it on again. And interestingly enough, the sensor inside the plywood sandwich actually peaked out sometime after I cut the heat, because it takes so long for the heat to penetrate into there. The temperature rise for this half hour here for the sensor on the wall is 7 degrees, whereas my model says 17 degrees every hour. So I should have had 8.5 degrees, but it's still reasonably close. Of course, as time goes on, the formula is very much dominated by heat leaking out of the shed, so I decided to calculate that as well. I used R7.5 insulation, which works out to RSI of 1.32, and dividing that by the total shed area works out to 0.064 degrees per watt, or 15.6 watts per degree temperature rise. So with 1000 watts in, that would result in an equilibrium that is 64 degrees higher. Based on my insulation calculations, I was able to calculate how much heat is leaking out of the shed in theory, 
and given the thermal mass and the heat input minus the leakage I was able to make a prediction of what the temperature should be on this graph and the temperature that my model predicts is this white line here which initially kind of follows the average of the inside the sandwich and taped to the wall but then it starts to deviate so I think what's happening is I've got a lot more leakage than my model would predict and so instead of this calculated factor if I just take this number as my degrees per Celsius per degree watt now that white line actually fits the readings on the plywood fairly well so based on that the shed is only insulated about two-thirds as well as the R7.5 would suggest of course not everything is R7.5 I've got quite a bit of thermal bridging from all the framing that is between the pieces of insulation even more leakage is this window which is just single pane and the door has no weather stripping in fact there is a gap that you can see through quite well all around it and I made no effort of sealing anything at all beyond just putting plywood on it so it leaks a little bit too now let's repeat this experiment with an actual room in the house this basement bedroom which I've been using as my office for editing and I'm curious how fast this room will warm up and how long it stays warm so I've got a whole lot of temperature sensors here wall, ceiling, floor, mid-height, and one on the bed, one on the dresser and I will heat it up with this Drio space heater I'll give it four hours I'll also turn on the oscillating feature just to spread the heat more evenly that's a 1600 watt mode and then I'll close the door and stay out of here to get a good reading of what happens just the room on its own and here's my temperature graph for my six sensors I had in here the least to heat up was of course the sensor on the floor second least was the sensor in the dresser and that one is really smoothed out because that dresser has thermal capacity of its own so it lagged the room quite a bit in heating and also in terms of cooling down the next one up is the sensor on the bed um, that was on the surface of the bed seems to move fairly well with it but it was much further down than the next sensor the uh, purple sensor is the one that was taped to the wall the blue one on the ceiling and this one is about chest height in the room and that one I thought I had a noisy sensor but then I realized there's probably some slightly turbulent convection going on as the heater is heating so that this uh, bubbling up and down of the temperature is actually quite real because once the heater is turned off it's actually quite steady and this little step had me mystified a little bit but then I remembered when I came in the room next morning the sensor that had been taped to the wall had fallen to the floor so this is probably where it fell off and went to the floor the white line segments are an exponential decay model that I fitted to my curves and that gave me a time constant of 286 minutes or about a half-life of the temperature of 198 minutes which is about 3.3 hours that is about 15% longer than it is for the shed surprising because I thought this room would hold its temperature much better than the shed would and based on those exponentials that fit to the curve the target temperature would have been 31 degrees at which point it would have reached equilibrium that's a 22 degree rise with 1500 watts input or 74 watts per degree so if that's correct maintaining a temperature that's warmer requires about three times as much heat per degree than my shed does but then again this room has got four times the surface area so it's not too bad next I was curious about the temperature profile in the room if I put the heater well off the floor and I put my temperature sensors one on the floor one right here one here one here here and then one taped to the ceiling I left the heater running for an hour the blue line was the one that was taped to the ceiling so that took a little bit longer to warm up the purple line is closest to the ceiling and then the next one down is the yellow line and then the cyan line down here that was actually below the heaters level so basically the room below the heater warmed up much less so than above the heater not surprising really also interesting the brown line is the sensor taped to the floor which didn't warm up as fast and then actually settled at a higher temperature level than the one above the floor which suggests that the room has got some amount of slight heat coming out of the floor when it's just sitting there then I repeated the same experiment but with the heater on the floor and the temperature rise in the upper part of the room was not nearly as dramatic the uh, ceiling actually was even slower to warm up 
but uh, lower down it warmed up uh, less so than near the top but there isn't this big gap like I saw before and then later on I just turned on the baseboard heater early in the morning just to warm up the room a bit because I was actually going to use it. Uh, these other experiments were done over the weekend when I can't really use this room anyways. Now also interesting here is when the heater was turned off there was a very steep drop of about 4 degrees Celsius almost immediately. When I had the heater on the floor that drop was perhaps less dramatic but uh, still quite a bit and that's just the uh, air cooling down in the room so just like with my shed Warming up the air is the quickest. Uh, again, a very steep rise here, steep drop here. So I can warm the air up by three or four degrees without warming up the room. But uh, warming up the rest of the room takes much longer. And here, once we had that steep drop, it drops much more slowly because this is actually heat coming back out of the walls and the furniture. So my main takeaway from all these experiments is that most of the heat in the room is stored in the wall ceiling and the content of the room. And if you want a room that heats up quickly, you don't want it to retain heat or cold very much. And this 1970s style uh, wall paneling, which I've mostly been using for drawer bottoms, would actually be a really good thing to put on the walls instead of drywalls. The room would warm up much quicker. And now back to this Drio space heater, because they're sponsoring this video. I popped it open to show you what's inside, because it's kind of neat. So here's the uh, brushless DC motor fan. This is a synchronous motor for uh, swiveling back and forth. Up here is the controller board and these little spring things actually capacitively couple through the top. So basically just by the finger being near them that registers a contact. And the heating elements are down here. These zigzaggy things here, those are actually just the heat sink. The heating elements themselves are these things sandwiched in between here and these get the full 120 volts across them. So on high, each of these banks of uh, little thingies here has 120 volts across them. And on low, one of those is switched off and just three of them heat. And those heating elements have a very high thermal coefficient. So they kind of passively cut down on the power if it gets too hot without the need for any active safety circuitry. So I've just plugged this in and I'll turn it on just by touching an insulated handle against the power button. And there it goes, consuming lots of power. And I have no cooling because the fan is outside of it. And let's see what happens. We're up to 1300 watts. And now the power is starting to drop as the heating elements in here get hot. Again, no cooling. So I can feel the elements are quite warm. Not crazy hot, but warm. And power keeps dropping. We're now down to 167 watts. Let's see how hot these elements are. Not hot enough to harm this piece of wood. I don't see it turning brown at all. Power level is down to 157 watts. So think of that like uh, just a bit more than a 100 watt bulb in here, which is quite reasonable. So it seems to be steady state at this. And now let's blow some air through there and watch the power level. It immediately goes up as these elements get cooled down again. And this is a much better approach than having some safety thermostat that cuts power if for some reason the elements got too hot because if the fan failed or somehow the airflow got blocked. With this approach, the elements just don't get that hot in the first place, so there's no danger to prevent.